there, my name is Steve Nath, and welcome back to Health Books, and today we are doing a tag. We are doing the Would You Rather 2.0 Tag Book 2 Edition, and I can't wait to see the questions. Would you rather only do review videos or tag videos? This is not a hard question. I could easily just do tag videos, as I have never done a review video up till now, so technically I'm already doing that. So, just keep on doing what I'm already doing. Would you rather always see the film first, or never see the film adaptation of books? Well, this is not a hard question either. I would easily, easily miss out on the films if it means that I don't have to watch them first. Like, I mean, no. I, I don't want to get spoiled. I like the idea of making up my own mind about how characters look, what places look like, and how a world exists. I mean, some of my favourite worlds have not been turned into films, and I'm very happy with that, as in... I have my own picture of the world, and it's so detailed out, and I've, I, I love it so much that I don't know if a film could, well, equal it. <laughs> not that I'm saying that films are bad, or that they would not be do a very good adaptation, but it's just that I, you will always have that little pinch of, like, that little, that little bit of disappointment when your, the adaptation is just like, oh, I, I, I saw that differently. And you will usually prefer your own, like, vision of a world, especially if it's been with you for a long time. Would you rather have a list of every single book you've ever read, like Goodreads, but since birth, or have a copy of your first favourite book? I'm sorry, I don't remember what my first favourite book was, so this is a really easy one. Goodreads since birth, obviously. I mean, as in a list of all books, which nowadays is possible because you could actually create a Goodreads account for your children. Hmm. Um, fun fact, I actually have a list of the hundred first books that I ever read. <laughs> Would you rather have an active in-person book club with non-booktubers or have lunch with your best booktube buddy once a year? In answer to this question, I have nothing against my booktube friends, obviously, but, I mean, an in-person book club would be amazing. Plus, I could talk about the book club in my videos, and that would be cool. It's like, yeah, so I have this book club. We're reading this book. If anyone wants to join in, virtually, I'll never see you. But yeah, <laughs> it would be cool. Would you rather have the time to read every single book you want to read, or the money to buy every single book you want to read? I'm sorry, this is not really a question, I mean... Okay, so the two cancel each other out, so if you have the money, you don't have the time, and if you have the time, you don't have the money. If that's the case, I'll go with time, because the libraries exist, and libraries are amazing, and libraries have books, and then I could just read forever, or just sit in a shop and read in the shop, but well, I don't know how... Or, hmm, that's another possibility, but libraries, libraries, at least I know you're allowed to do it. Um, because, I mean, if I had the money to buy the books, and I bought them, I, and I didn't have time to read them, well, wouldn't that be terrible? No, I mean, that would be quite disappointing. Would you rather dreamcast the film, or have editing power over the script of your favourite book movie adaptation? I know nothing about good actors and what it takes to be a good actor, or if an actor would do well in a role or not. So I'm gonna leave that to whoever will actually decide on that. And I really like the idea of having editing power on the script because I really enjoy writing and it kind of will be really fun to do, I think. And also if I see that something's terrible, at least I'd be able to change it. But the fact is that I could maybe choose the best or the worst actors for his role without knowing it, even if I think they kind of look like the person in the book, in my opinion. Um, It'd be really difficult to... And anyhow, I mean, if I have editing power over the um, script, if you combine it with the second question where I said I wouldn't watch films, then, I mean, having editing power over the script, at least, I know that I have improved something, hopefully, um, for other people watching it, because, I mean, I'm not going to see the actors' faces. I'm not. Well, I might if I'm editing the script and I'm on set, but if I'm not on set, then I don't see them. So there is no real point for me having the power to choose who the actors are. So, yeah. <laughs> Would you rather have your favourite fictional superpower or favourite fictional technology? I haven't thought about this one before. I don't read a lot of sci-fi. 
I don't read a lot of books with people with superpowers. Do I? Oh, I actually do. I actually think I have a few superpowers there that would be really cool. Legacies. The Lorian Legacies. There's some pretty cool legacies. Now I can't really pick which one, but like, I definitely say the legacies as the fictional superpowers, and I don't really have an equivalent, like, a technology, there's, there's like the Oasis from, from Ready Player One, but I think the powers in uh, the Lorian Legacy series are so much more useful, and you could do so much more than with the virtual reality Oasis, so I'm gonna go with, um, with the Lorian Legacies, I mean, really, who wouldn't? Um, even if I don't get to pick which one I get. Or which ones. <laughs> Would you rather read an amazing story with a meh ending, or a meh story with an amazing ending? If a book is really amazing, and the ending is disappointing, you could just rewrite the ending for yourself, and like have your own ending and be like, yep, I prefer this. Um, that's one possibility. So that would make that one more interesting. The other side of it, though, is that if a story is not great but the ending is extraordinary, it's kind of the last note that a book leaves you on. But the thing is, if it doesn't really create a world that you want to stay in or be in because, like, the story itself wasn't great, then even an extraordinary ending, I don't think it's going to make the book that much better. Um, so I'm going to go with the first one, an amazing story, because at least you can, like, imagine yourself in the world, and maybe even imagine an alternate story in that world, and then just not have, just erase that ending from your mind or something like that, you know? Or like, edit it in some ways. Would you rather not be able to read while lying down, or in moving vehicles? As I read a lot in cars, trains, buses, planes, boats, I think I'm gonna go with, um, like, I'd like to be able to read in those, because that's useful, and I mean, if I can't lie down and read, well, then I can sit against the wall and read somewhere, you know, instead of lying down. I mean, the only place I'd lie down to read would be a couch or a bed, and I mean, you can sit in either of those, so I mean, yeah. Let's go with reading in moving vehicles, because that's better. Would you rather reread your favourite book or series with fresh eyes, or be able to unread your biggest disappointment? I mean, seriously, um... The fact that I didn't like a book, I can at least say I didn't like that book, here is why. In the case of my favourite series, I'm just like, oh, that was so amazing when I first read it. I, just the revelation, that ending, this, that, the other, there's so many amazing things. And just to be able to rediscover that and like not know before you read it that that was going to happen, it would be so amazing. Especially if you know it's your favourite book of all time and you've just like forgotten the, the story and that you don't actually remember why you're reading. Um, I mean, that would be amazing. I mean, if I could just be like, oh, can't remember that book, how it ends. I know I love it. Let's read it again. And then just read it and be like, ah! <laughs> you know what I mean. Would you rather go to Hogwarts or live in Middle Earth? I have an easy answer for this one. I'll go to Hogwarts and over the summer I can travel to New Zealand. Because, I mean, seriously, the scenery in those films. <laughs> um, I haven't personally read the books for The Lord of the Rings, which I will have to get to at some point, but I only have the books in French, so I really want to get them in English first, and I have so many books that I own that I want to read first. That was the last question, I hope you enjoyed this. If you really enjoyed it, I would love it if you shared it with your friends. I mean, it makes it more fun with there's more people interacting, and I just love talking to people. And yeah, <laughs> let me know what you think down below in the comments, and if you have any questions or anything like you think I should cover, or you think I should do a tag, or whatever, whatever it is, let me know, I would love to know, I would love to talk with you. Now I'm going to go on to tag a few people, so I'm going to tag Emma from Teller of Tales, Rachel from Awaken Reading, Michelle from Fluffy Bookbug, and Nadira from... One last thing that I would like to mention is that there's a booktuber called Emma Petfield who is doing a readathon next week from the 11th to the 17th of May and it is to support Mental Health Awareness Week. I will leave a link in the description for her video about this readathon as well as a link to the Goodreads group that was created for it. There's also a hashtag, hashtag Mindful Reads, and um, you can use that so the reason why is because for Mental Health Awareness Week, they decided on the topic of mindfulness. So, 
I think it would be great to participate. Unfortunately, I can't participate um, because I have exams, six exams during that week, so I probably won't be able to do any reading. Um, but I thought it would be important to um, put that out there because it's important for more people to be aware of uh, mental health and um, to talk about it. So I hope you have a great week and I'll see you next week. Bye.